course. She decides to jam on me. Hey guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how I make homemade masks. I'm going to be making a youth size or like a young adult size because that's one of the ones that kind of gets requested a lot, these smaller sizes because a lot of people are making bigger ones. So I'm going to be starting out with some fabric. We're going to be using approximately 11, 11 and a half, 12 inches if you have it. Mine just happened to cut just under 12 straight. And then we are going six inches in width. That is because it's gonna be folded up kind of like that, and then this kind of gets to be the smushed up part. So as you can see, you need to give it a little bit of slack. So that's what we are working with. You'll also need some sort of strips. We pre-cut these long strips. They are approximately three inches, one, two, three inches wide by 40 to 42 inches long. These were ones that we pre-cut and then we purchased these that were already pre-cut in a package from, I believe it was Walmart. It's a 20 pack and they come in some cute little designs. So I'm, I've been using these on the borders of some of the masks as well and then just using like plain fabric for that to go around the edges up, which is really cute. So as you can see here, I have pre-ironed some of these and what I've done is I've gone and I've folded it over like so, where I've taken the edges and I've folded it into the center, fold that into the center, and I ironed that flat, and then I fold that over and I iron that flat. This gives me the creases so when I'm sewing, it makes it a lot easier. It just wraps around the mask and makes my job a lot easier. For example, if say this is like a little child size mask, it will go right along the edge like so. And so then you'll have your length of your straps for ties or whatever. I've been attempting to use Velcro on some of these little kid ones and it's been jamming up my sewing machine so I don't recommend using Velcro with sticky adhesive on the back like mine is. I don't happen to have any that's non-sticky or doesn't have any of the adhesive so unfortunately I'll have to either hand sew that or just send that as an option with the mask and that can be hand sewn in for people who are having a hard time getting it onto the back of the children's head or they keep pulling it off or they're just like trying to get on there quickly and not have to tie stuff into hair or whatever. I found that to be a good option for my young son. So that's something that I recommend. And then the ties are a lot more comfortable for someone who doesn't want something behind their ears or if you already wear glasses that are already obstructing and sitting behind your ears. These cloth ties are much easier. And also if you don't have elastic, it's a good option. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Today I'm working with a towel as my foundation because I need to do ironing in the process because my straps here are not pre-ironed. So I will go ahead and show you guys how I do that as a part of this process. But I just wanted to show you one more time the measurements that we have here. We're looking at about 11 and a half to almost 12 inches by six inches of fabric. We can do it this way to give you that visual. So what we're going to do first is take these little pieces or edges here and they're gonna get a fold over. So that way we get a nice little edge here and I'm gonna repeat that on both sides. Once those are sewn up, we will then create our little filter pocket. I'm using a black thread and a black bobbin here. And then what I'm doing is I'm just going to feed 
through this little piece of folded, folded fabric to get a nice smooth edge. And then I just keep the fold going and then I take from back here and I pull it kind of snug. Make sure not to get your hands or fingers anywhere near the needle. I have a nice little foot guard here. I recommend that. Just take the other side, fold that down a little bit, fold it over and do the same thing we did to the other side. What we're going to do is take here and combine your two edges like so, and you are going to leave this much space that is unsewn. You're going to come up the sewing machine and sew up, and then come back down. You're going to come sew up, and then come back down. actually meant to sew it with the good side of the fabric facing on the inside, but it worked out. You're going to turn it on the inside. Doesn't matter how you do it. You should have sewn this on the inside, so my apologies. But it'll still look fine because we lined it up. So here you're going to turn it down just an inch or so, and you're going to sew along each seam. surface for now. So what I'm going to do is take this, cut off any scragglers of strands, and I am going to turn this inside out, or right side out. And as you can see, it doesn't matter which way that I sewed that one part for the pocket hole because I lined it up nicely, it still will look fine. So what you're going to do now is create the little folds that allow it to allow it to be kind of like adjustable you know those little folds like that and like that so this one here has the filter folds so you're going to take that one and right where that is you're going to fold over the top of that hump and then you're going to take down and go up a top of there and do like that you can pin this down while sewing to make it easier for yourself I don't do that because I like to make it difficult obviously but I'm going to sew straight down here, and I'm going to sew straight down here. I bring out the iron to iron it into place because that does help. Okay. I also wanted to show you how I make the folds for the trim. We're going to fold into the middle, and then into the middle. It's fine if it doesn't have straight edges because we're going to make it all nice and straight by ironing it. These creases and folds will help guide us while we're sewing and help hold it all together. Once we get all the way down to the end, we're going to take this piece here and then fold it over and keep going. Moving on down much easier to do this ahead of time than to try to do it during because it makes it more difficult. You need two of those three inches by 42 inches long. Okay, once you've got those strips sewn and ready to go, you've got this ironed out. You can go ahead and sew that down on the sides, not the length, but the short end. Next, we're going to take and we're going to sew on 
our little straps. See, that's gonna tuck in nicely like that. And that will tuck in nicely like that. Now, you're going to sew these on, but you need to line them up in the middle first. So what I like to do, is I take it, fold it in half, find my center point, kind of put it down right there. And these in if you want to hold your spot. Of course, I make it difficult and I just hold it because I'm silly like that. Got that figured out where that's gonna go. On the end, what you're gonna do to get started, you're gonna take your end and you're going to fold it once and then you're going to fold it again like so. That is how you will start it. Give you a nice clean strap. Work your way into the center all the way down and then we'll work our way onto that piece. Now that I'm starting to move here, I'm gonna grab it. Keep this nice and lined up. I'm going to go closer to a little lower down here to make sure I'm getting all of that in. Then you sew down to the rest and then fold in your little end once more. On to the other side. Match it up, fold in your little ends. finished edges here. Here is our hidden pocket to put a filter. You could put like a coffee filter in there, I recommend. And then you have, it's like a accordion style mask. Now to show you a few more of the styles that we've done. This is the youth size that we did in the Harry Potter. Uh, an infant sized that I've done here for my little baby niece and I did velcro straps on the back so that it's adjustable. I made sure to put the rougher type of the side that's going to be laying on the head so that the part that's going to actually touch the scalp or the back of the head is the soft side so that that's adjustable and can be put onto her head there. It looks almost like it's for a baby doll. Then I made a, another one of the Harry Potters here in a very similar design, just a different style. Here's the pocket for the filter. And then it's got the different houses on that one. This one I was trying to make one of those ones that go kind of on the nose, you know, it kind of goes around. It also has Velcro straps that I did sew through the back of, but the adhesive started sticking into my sewing machine and jamming it, so I stopped doing the Velcro. If I had Velcro without adhesive, I would have kept doing this style because I feel like that's much easier for children. This one has the filter in the bottom. I figured that would just be easy to slide it up underneath. And there's that one. Then I did a Thomas the Train one here, and it is also Velcroed, but those have not been hand sewn in or folded over yet on the edges. And I'm being careful to trim the corners around here and round those off so that even when they're sewn on, they're rounded off and there's no poking or irritation or catching of hair. And then those are adjustable the same way. So the dimension on an adult one is eight by 15. And then I asked my sister what the circumference of her baby's head or skull was, and it was 17 inches. So I did between, I think, 16 and 19 or something like that to give her 
some leeway here in case of like bows or hair or whatever you could go even smaller if you need to i think on one of the sides i did it i did go a little smaller because that's going to go around the smaller side of the head so you can just kind of vary these dimensions based on custom sizes that you need or you can make generic sizes that fit all the 42 inch straps fit adult sizes so you could go smaller for children's i left them longer so that you had extra slack to tie when you're fussing with kids if you're doing it on that if you want to do the custom ones again find out the average size of the skull size for the child range that you're looking at the circumference size and give yourself a minus one or two inch leeway allowance and it add a two inch allowance because you're going to fold in a little half or quarter inch on each end as you sew in and so then you're going to want to have about an inch and a half to two inches of leeway for them to be able to adjust the sizing here so that is my suggestion on that i hope you guys like these little masks i'll show some more pictures of a couple of the other ones that i made and we've donated several to some family we're mailing these to my sister in texas we've given some to some frontline workers all kinds of people who are just needing masks to help keep you guys safe i'm glad that we were able to use the scraps that we have here and send them your way love you guys bye <laughs> no, easy. Take your hands off. What? Look at me.